Hey, everybody. I want to welcome you to this week's episode of Business Insights with Matt Milia. And I'm super excited because I want to talk to you a little bit about Business Done Better, an amazing organization that can help you shortcut and streamline the process to a successful implementation in your business using the right tools, leveraging the right systems, and of course, having an having an amazing network of great people. But before we get into that, let me go ahead and cue that intro. Welcome to Business Insights with Matt Milia. I'm your host, Matt Milia. And in this podcast, we'll talk about the real, raw, uncut business success secrets you won't find anywhere else. Follow my journey from entry level to CEO. We discuss real actionable items you can plug into your business right away. To subscribe to our weekly top tips, you can go to www.mattpodcast.com and join our community of elite high-level performers. And if you're interested in our inside sales company, you can go to www.appointmentstoday.com to jump on a free strategy call. And now, stay tuned for our podcast. All right, everybody. So, hey... Rebecca, thank you so much. I have Rebecca Kalous on with us, and I'm super excited to have her on. She is one of the, you're the founder, right? The founder, and I love it. So the founder of Business Done Better, thank you for jumping on with me here. Thank you for having me, Matt. It's absolutely a pleasure. (laughs) Awesome. Well, tell us, for everyone who doesn't know, uh, tell everyone a little bit about Business Done Better. Yeah, so Business Done Better, essentially we're the combination of two things. So we're a chapter-based membership organization with a bunch of monthly events combined with the Business Solution Center. So on the monthly event side, we hold regular educational events, interactive workshops, speed networking, quarterly community give back events. And then on the Business Solution Center side, we really shortcut the learning curve for businesses to figure out what's the right fit for your needs and your budget in terms of software platforms, marketing services, um, accounting, uh, corporate credit, funding, financing. So pretty much everything that somebody needs, we have something to offer. That is a lot. So <laughs> you guys, you guys have a lot of great resources. That That's amazing. What, what was it that made you think about a business like this? What was it that inspired you? Yeah. So um, my, my technical background is actually in holistic health, um, but I started my first company a, a good handful of years ago. I was the only full-time distributor in the country of a specific medical device. Um, and I started that company on $250,000 and or I'm sorry, 250, not thousand. $250 and homeless. Um, and so I had to do everything from scratch myself. I had no resources. I didn't have anyone to turn to. And I just realized how limited the resources are to really kind of figure out how to navigate in, in starting a business, especially. Um, I've also, I ran a wellness center, um, a small facility, and um, you know I've been in different aspects of business. I also created a marketing uh, department for a $15 million flooring company. Um, so, you know, I've kind of run the gamut in, in just understanding the different um, scenarios and needs of businesses of all sizes. Um, I've also dabbled in a lot of different consulting avenues. Um, So I've really just seen all the mistakes that business owners commonly make, um, both beginning a business and all the way through. So it was something that I really wanted to kind of I build all my businesses for me at the end of the day, because it's, these are all resources that I'm like, I wish I knew all of these things. And then once I learned them, it's like, okay, well, everyone else needs these things as well. So, you know, we really want to provide everything it is that somebody needs for their business. I love that. And not 250,000, $250. <laughs> no, we got, we got 2022 20, on the brain right now. <laughs> that's all right. I think that's great though, because so you started with essentially not having, I mean, just there was not, there wasn't even a home support system, homeless, uh, $250. That is, I mean, that's, talk about, <laughs> talk about it like an amazing story. And that in itself should be enough to really motivate someone and drive them to, strive for more because there's so few people that can operate like that because your life wasn't necessarily in, I'm sure, not in the best balance. <laughs> and, and when your life and your work are not in balance, 
and your being, it's just, it's so difficult to push through that. What was it that with, with that, uh, with that a low of core capital and an investment, what was it that you focused on getting first? Uh, because this is a, an amazing opportunity for anyone that's watching <laughs> to start a business, have yeah. very little money. What do you do? So, I mean, that's something that uh, I've also done a lot of coaching. And, and like I mentioned, we're a chapter-based membership organization. So um, I run all of our chapter presidents through a four-week onboarding process. Um, so I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one and group coaching through that process specifically. I um, mean, through all that, I've really realized that most people fall into one of two buckets. So they're either a systems and structures person, which is me. <laughs> um, and then the other bucket, um, I haven't really figured out the right term for it. Someone said a pollinator, like a, I want to say a people person, but that's, it's usually like a, they're a sale, any salesperson is usually in this category. Um, visionary, not, visionary maybe. Um, I don't know, because a visionary could be on both sides, on both buckets. Because sure. um, sure. I'm a visionary and, and, a, and um, I execute things. Um, but that's, it's different. I'm not a, like, get the people in the door person. Um, and a salesperson, like they're just, uh, that two bucket concept, it kind of came, um, came to mind when I was having a conversation with a friend of mine. Um, and then I realized it was a pattern with, with pretty much uh, most of the people that I knew where, you know, for me, you asked what I did first. So basically, um, systems and structures is my default. So when my life is in chaos, I fall back on systems and structures. Okay, what um, practices do I need to put into place? What things do I need to clean up? What, um, where do I need to kind of tighten things up? My, my routines, um, Excel sheets, um, you know, whatever that looks like, just, just something to strengthen the foundation so that I can stand on solid ground. That's where I default to. Um, and then, but I have a couple friends that are, they're salespeople and they're like, like, bro, you just got to make more sales. And I'm like, but the foundation is selling. I can't sell stuff and the foundation's not selling. They're like, it doesn't matter. You just got to make more sales. You know, like, so, so we all know those people too. And here's the part that I think people on both sides of the fence kind of miss is that neither one is right or wrong where, you know, my friends in this bucket, that works for them. But if you put me and run me through the same actions that that person does, I'm going to fall on my face. <laughs> <laughs> and right. so it really, what you do first, it, it really, you have to know yourself. Um, you have to play to your strengths um, and your strengths could be your skill sets. It could be your network. Um, you know, whatever it is, that's what you do first is whatever is in your control now. Um, so, and then just to kind of just tie everything together, you know, you, you mentioned how, you know, when, when I was in that position that your life isn't exactly stable. You have a lot of stuff going on and it's hard to, it's hard to see in front of your face. Um, and so that's something that obviously I have personal experience with. And so, um, like I said, my technical background is in holistic health. So I understand firsthand where if you're, if your health, how, sorry, excuse me, how directly connected your health is to your revenue. So that's something where through Business Done Better, we actually offer health classes that are designed for busy professionals. So they're seven to 15 minute either classes or lectures that are very direct to the point. You know, if it's a class, it's just, it's just you know, whatever the action, if it's a posture class, if it's a meditation, if it's a, um, a fitness class, uh, or if it's a lecture, you know, it's just, it's really designed for somebody who has a very busy lifestyle. Um, so, because that's something where if you're not healthy, you can't run your business. And if your staff isn't healthy, their productivity tanks. So that concept, I guess, developed from, you know, my personal experience where I understood firsthand how important that is. So true. And, and I've realized too, even for myself, that when, when I'm not at my, my healthiest or I'm not putting health at the forefront or I'm not time blocking that commitment to that morning routine, do notice that other areas of life just start to have this nice progressional, progressional downhill slide where everything just starts to, you take certain things for granted, that energy that you used to have, that charisma, the being able to be out in front of people. Uh, those are traits that I really value. And when you don't have that energy and you don't have that, it's, it's so tough. So for you, I mean, being in a position where, and this might be a tough question, but organic eating, I just, 
I just changed my entire diet, my entire system of what I was eating, what I was doing, my routines, the times I eat. And it's made a massive difference, but man, the bills have like skyrocketed for the cost of food and things like that. Were you still able to have that type of approach, even though you weren't in, uh, living out of a house, a place? I mean, what was your See, diet life? If you don't mind sharing. No, I don't mind sharing at all. It's a great question. Um, so that's something where, um, so, you know, I was talking to somebody else who has just this absolutely amazing story. She's actually a nonprofit that we're going to be working with. Um, and she was, she was talking about, oh my gosh, this girl, literally everything you could possibly think of this girl has gone through it. And she was talking about when she was at, you know, one of her lowest places, you know, she was eating out of ketchup packets, <laughs> you know, that was, that was all, yeah. you know, like, that's just, and here's the thing where it, that's one of the toughest positions that you can be in, because if you aren't sustaining your body, your, your mind is directly correlated to your gut. Okay. So your food, uh, you really are what you eat. Um, specifically you think what you eat. <laughs> so that's something where, um, if you're not taking care of yourself health wise, then it, it takes you away from your business and it takes you away from the creative uh, thought process on how to get out of your situation. And so it's this, this really kind of, you know, lose, lose situation. That's really hard to break through. Um, so, I mean, I, uh, there was, there was a time I was, uh, when I, when I was homeless, um, I went into Chipotle and I, I broke down crying because I didn't know if I had a dollar 50 upcharge for guacamole. Um, and I knew my, that's my background. I needed to have saturated fats so that I could, you know, be, feel more satiated. Um, you know, if you, you're eating junk food, you know, for a couple bucks, you're going to, your body's going to want more food. Whereas I'm like, okay, if I have some avocado, then I'm going to feel more full and I'm not going to need as much food. And I was like, I don't know when I'm going to be able to eat again. So like, and I didn't know if I had that dollar 50. So that was definitely a really fun, <laughs> fun moment on the chalkboard. Um, but yeah. I have no idea how I made it through, <laughs> to be totally honest. It's, it's one of those things where you just, you have to tell yourself it's temporary. You're going to get through it and you just keep getting up. It does not matter how many times you get knocked down. You, it just matters how many times you get up. Um, so, you know, that's something where I just, I have, I do have a lot of tenacity and that's something where I, I don't give up on things that I, I know I'm supposed to be doing. Um, so it, it's, you have to focus on whatever's in your control in that moment. Um, so sometimes you, you, you only have, you can only have ketchup packets. Okay. Well, um, then focus on your breath work, make sure you're getting enough sleep. Um, you focus on your, your stress levels, uh, which sounds counterintuitive. It's obviously a very hard thing to do when you're in chronic survival mode, but you have no choice. You have to address it because otherwise you'll never get out of that position. Oh. That's amazing <laughs> advice. And well, and it's, it's so, it's so interesting, because there are so many people that have these perfect life conditions. And uh, one of the one of the books that well, there's a couple books, uh, it was funny, because you said what you eat is directly related to your gut. I've just read the book, The Energy Paradox by Dr. Stephen Gundry. And it's okay. funny, because it, well, and it all talks about gut biomes and everything else as far as what you're eating and when to eat and why it's so important to not put terrible stuff in you. And if you're going to, making sure that you are, that you're incorporating the right, I think you said mono, you call it like mono meals or, but mo, you said mono saturated fat. I just said saturated fat, but it's, it. there's so many things that, and you could, I, I like to keep things simple in health and business and life. Um, cause there's an endless rabbit hole that you can go down and with nutrition, everyone has a different thought process. Um, so yep. you could, you could think about it really simple where you want to stick it as close to nature as possible. So someone said a, a kind of very blunt phrase to me years ago that really stuck with me, eat live, live, eat dead, die. <laughs> wow. <laughs> where, when you're eating was... food. Yeah. When you're, when you're eating food, that's very alive. So like sprouts, right. for, ex uh, for example, they, they are very high in phytonutrients. Um, they're, they're literally still growing when you buy them from the grocery store. So they're very alive. Um, people are like, oh, well, you know, I eat meat that comes from an animal that was alive. It's like, 
now it's been dead and decaying for a while actually <laughs> and right. then, uh, yeah so like we can go into you know all sorts of rabbit holes like that that's something that um i haven't eaten meat in three years um because it, it's something that here's just a, like kind of a light bulb thing and this is this is why i stopped eating meat is because how do you feel when you're in chronic stress pretty terrible right yeah yeah <laughs> How do you think that reflects on your insights, on your physiology? <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Very, yeah. So, so if an animal is in chronic stress for its entire life, um, and then it's killed and then you eat it, you're consuming all of that physiological stress that that animal went through. And it's like, you think that that doesn't have an impact on you. <laughs> like, you know, it's, um, you know, so that's a whole other thing. And, and it just, I hold no judgment on anyone's nutritional choices or anything like that. You just have to know what it is that you're eating. Um, right. so, you know, I, I have almost, I'm not even hundred percent plant-based. I'm pretty close, but, but I'd say like 90%. Um, but, uh, yeah, I have sugar every once in a while. Um, you know, that's something that's really hard to cut off sugar completely. Um, so, you know, sure. but when I consume a, a cookie or something like that, like I know what I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm not like, True. oh, this is totally good for me. No, I want a cookie. It's okay. <laughs> well, and I think I think it also goes back to when what I was getting at with the other book was uh David Goggins. I don't know if you're familiar with David Go oh man. So David Goggins is a he's an author, but he was actually he was a Navy SEAL and this man has he had breathing problems. He dealt with racial issues when he was growing up. Uh, people just, I mean, his entire life is about being comfortable living in the uncomfort, living in, an, in a position where like, you grow the most out of being uncomfortable. And, but at the same time, what I love about what you're doing is you almost have a panel or a showcase of experts that you are literally saying, hey, we've fallen on our face. We're not afraid to admit that. And we're going to show you what not to do. And we're going to share with you what you should do and things that you should focus on. Because even before we jumped on here, you said something that was pretty profound. I'm like, oh my God, you're right. There are times that you'll go, you might have like the winning game plan for a few months, the winning system, everything looks amazing. And then because of technology's just rapid and crazy increasing speed, it may not be relevant any longer. Yeah. No, it's something That's is <laughs> huge. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't cut you off. Go ahead. No, you're good. As a business owner, one of the most important things um, to apply in, in life and business is, is the ability to pivot. Um, you know, so obviously we saw that with COVID, that was the most, you know, globally, uh, global specific moment that ever happened. Um, but it's always been the case and it always will be the case, you know, no matter what the future holds, um, you always have to be able to adapt to whatever comes your way. So, um, and like you mentioned, technology is, is just a perfect example. So, um, you know, if you're, if you've been in business for a long time and, you know, when you started your business, you had all the right technology, everything was top of the line. It was all, everything that the experts recommended. Okay. Well, fast forward just a couple of short years and it could all be antiquated, um, and, you know, and to, especially today, tech is growing at such a crazy, crazy rate. And it's something that if you don't have somebody in house who's constantly doing research on seeing, you know, what is it that, that, you know, we should be adding or adjusting or something um, in our business, even just from a tech perspective alone, not mentioning anything else, um, you know, it, you're going to fall behind. And so that's something that with Business Done Better, we really want to become that, that trusted brand that people can go to where you don't have to pay somebody in-house to, to do that service. You know, we really want to shortcut that learning curve for you because it's it's impossible. The, the truth of the matter is it's impossible to keep up with that being a busy business owner. And, and I'm so glad you brought that up because one of the things for me, so going into... Uh, I'm not a huge fan of talking about COVID because it's all over the place and everyone's like, it's the last thing I want to hear, but I will bring this up because I feel like it's very profound. Uh, 2019 was by far the best year we ever had. We had broken through the seven figure mark. I was ecstatic with where we were in business. We had a lot of great relationships and then 2020 came and it was like a hammer had just fallen down because we had in 2019, we had a couple, you know, like business, 
business doesn't always, it changes, it evolves. We had some amazing clients. We had some challenges with those clients. They were major influencers. And of course, our business started to take a little bit of a downward turn. Generally speaking, it happens, especially during winter season, because at the time we were focused solely on real estate and mortgage, great industries. However, we had very little diversification. We weren't in other spaces. So what ended up happening is normally February, March, things skyrocket. All of a sudden our business, we have this big fall off, usually in November, October, November, it starts to slow down a bit. December and January, screeching halt because in a lot of markets, it's cold. Some of the real estate agents, some of the loan officers weren't doing as much business then. They didn't have a need for as much calling. So they'd either temporarily put things on hold or pause or reevaluate. Well, what ended up taking place is normally when we skyrocket up in March, COVID hit. And our model was so easily duplicatable, we would take an inside salesperson, we'd bring our person in to make phone calls for them. Whatever lead generation system they had, we'd log into their system, make the calls on their system. Problem with that is that with what I had to pay that person to make those phone calls and the amount of money that came from that one person, I now had a payroll that was coming on close to $80,000 a month. And I'm like looking at how do I make this work? And I'm not even bringing in anywhere near that. I'm taking a massive loss. How am I going to stay in business? And fortunately, I was able to put away cash, but it was someone else that was a competitor of ours that wanted to actually combine fires, merge together. And come to find out that she would she found a way to leverage one person to call for three or four clients at the exact same time. All of a sudden I was like, that was like the thank you Jesus moment. I'm like, I was like, thank you. Well, I don't know like how this happened, but we we figured it out and we got through it. But if it wasn't for that other person and their knowledge, because they've been doing it for longer than I've been in business, I would have never known to do that. And that's why I feel like a company, business, by the way, for everyone watching, businessdonebetter.org is amazing. And that is so impactful to be able to give that back to the community. Uh, I really, I want to thank you for being on here because this is awesome. But I also want to make sure if there's any areas that you want to touch on that I didn't go through, all you. Sure. Um, well, I want to kind of explain, you know, some of the um, the benefits, because like I said, we're a chapter based membership organization and a business solution center. So mm -hmm. um, you don't have to take advantage of our membership to take advantage of our services. So anyone is welcome to, um, you know, look at all the I think we have 33 services listed on there right now. Um, so we really kind of run the gamut. There's only a couple key um, things that we, we don't have at the moment that we're working on. Um, but most things that somebody could want, we, we have, um, we have an option for, uh, and, and that's kind of our, our secret sauce to our business is that we really, we leverage third parties. So some of them we do in house, but we really, um, right now, I personally that every single third party that we work with to make sure that you are getting some, some, a serve product or service that's very quality. Um, so it's something that anything that's done through business done better, you can trust that you're in good hands. Um, so even if it's not an in-house service, we, it's, it still has our stamp of approval on it. So I, th I feel like that's really important. Um, so, and then our membership levels, we have three different membership tiers. Um, they start as low as $20 a month. <laughs> so, you know, any, any business owner, even though when I was homeless, I could still, you know, <laughs> not every time, but <laughs> it's, still make it work to find $20, borrow $20 or something. Um, you know, just because you have to, when you're in business, you have to make sure that, um, that something's making sense that it's going to get you through the next level. So that's something with, even at the $20 a month level, we have an affiliate uh, aspect to our business as well. So our members get a 10% affiliate commission. So if you're at the $20 a month level and two people sign up at the top level, you're already making more than $20 a month. Um, so your, your membership dues are already covered. Um, and we, I love value stacking. So my, my partner in Santa Monica, she, she always makes fun of me. She's like, she goes, you keep adding new things that I didn't even know about. And she's like, we do that now too. I'm like, yep, yep, we do. <laughs> um, so we really, 
So everything is value stacked really hard. So our top level right now is it, the price is going up soon, but it's at, um, our top level is at 117 a month. And um, I, I just, we just gave a presentation. It's really about, about a, it's almost $2,000 worth of value <laughs> that you're getting for it. Um, so that price will be going up. So that ratio makes a little bit more sense. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. And I think that you guys have such a, you guys, you have such an amazing business and you have an amazing acumen for it. And the fact that you, the fact that you were able to build something like this really from the ground up, it's pretty remarkable to see. And, and I believe that having that support system, that group, having the ability to lean on a community just makes so much sense. And as far as for everybody that's on here, again, businessdonebetter.org, uh, you see it across the screen, but uh, we also have it in the comments section. So certainly jump on, take a look at the site. And uh, there's so many amazing advantages to being a part of that. So other than that, Rebecca, again, thank you so much for being on. Uh, and uh, anything else you want to close out with? Uh, I guess just one closing comment because uh, it was something that has come up a couple times um, where, you know, someone's like, okay, there's not a chapter in my area, you know, is, does it still make sense for me to join? Um, you actually get most of the benefits of uh, being a member, even if there's not a local chapter, because most of, it's a very hybrid model. So, um, you know, the only real benefits of there being a local chapter are that there is a local point of contact. So that's something that, you know, like you said, it's being a part of that community is, is really important. Uh, but that's something that we really kind of really push from the organizational level as well as on the local chapter level. So even if there's not a chapter, you know, you're still part of that global membership. And so you still have that whole community. Um, but that's something that we really, if there is a local chapter in your area, we really push people to be a part of that local chapter so that you have that local point of contact. Awesome. All right. Well, no, and I'm sure that's something that comes up. So I'm glad that you were able to, I'm glad that you were able to bring so much value to this. And I'm really excited to see the progression, the growth, where you guys go and, and really see some people uh, sign up from this. So again, thank you for jumping on and uh, for everyone tuning in. We'll see you guys, same channel, same place next week. See everybody.